Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Dalat Capital, we welcome you all to the Q1 FY24 conference call of IRCTC Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of IRCTC, represented by Ms. Seema Kumar, who is CMD of the company, and Mr. Ajit Kumar ji, who is Director of Finance and CFO of the company. And also, we have today with us Dr. Lokia Ravi Kumar who is Director of Catering Services and Mr. K. M. Mishraji, who is Director for the Tourism and Marketing Segment. And now I would like to hand the conference over to IRCTC Management to take the proceeding forward. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you for this con call of IRCT Limited for a Q1 of FY24. As we are aware, ISCTC has already announced the unaudited financial results for the first quarter yesterday and the same have also been disclosed on both the stock exchanges. I would now be giving a brief overview of QI, Q1 FY24, which will be followed up by the detailed of performance of our business segments by Director Finance and CFO. After that, we will be having question and answer sessions. Um, Q1 FY24 has been a landmark year for the ISCTC, with the revenues costing, crossing the 1000 crores quarterly mark for the first time since the inception of this company. An absolute revenue, EBITDA and net profit before exceptional items also touching a new high. Q1 FY24 revenue was at 1002 crores implying a growth of 3.8% Q&Q and 17.5% on Y on Y. The largest segment catering has been the main driver for this QOQ rev revenue growth. Importantly, this is also backed by the imp improvement of EBIT margin for the segment to 14.6% in Q1 as compared to 12% in Y and Y and 12.1% on quarter and quarter. The consolidated level despite the loss in tourism segment due to a one-time adjustment of exceptional item of Rs 51.9 crores towards provisioning of revised haulage charges as mandated by the Ministry of Railways for the Tejas train for the previous years, the EBITDA margin came at 34.2 percent as compared to 33.6 percent for quarter on quarter and 37.6 percent year on year. If we exclude this exceptional item of rupees 52 crores for the provision of Tejas uh, haulage charges, tourism segment has also registered a profit. Absolute EBITDA is also hit a new high at rupees. 343 crores. Net profit before exceptional item for quarter 1 came at 284 crores as compared to 253 crores in quarter 4 of uh, FY23 and 246 crores in quarter 1 of FY23. I would like to conclude my opening remarks by saying that IRCTC continues to demonstrate its resili resilient business model during the important post the COVID-19 pandemic. It is this resilience combined with the commitment that will help the company to continue on its growth path in future as well. Now I will hand over the call to my colleague and our Director of Finance and CFO, Shri Adit Kumar, to brief you on the financial and segmental performance of the company. Thank you. <coughs> good afternoon, everybody. And I hope you and your dear ones are in good health. I shall first give a brief overview about Q4 FY23 results, post which we shall have the question and answer session. Q1 FY24 revenue saw another quarter of good growth, both on quarter over quarter and year over year basis. <coughs> revenue of rupees 1002 crore, when we have marked the four figure 1000 crore, grew by 3.8 percent quarter over quarter and 17.5 percent year over year. Consolidated EBITDA margin improved quarter over quarter to 34.2 percent versus 33.6 percent and versus 37.6 percent given the change in revenue mix. The net profit before exceptional items for the quarter came at rupees 284 crore versus two rupees 253 crore in Q4 FY23 and rupees 245 crore in Q1 FY23. <coughs> Let us move to the now the different business segments of the company. The first one, the catering. 
The cutting segment reported another quarter of a strong revenue growth of 20.5 percent quarter over quarter and 35.5 percent year over year to rupees 477 crore and debit margin also saw a good improvement to 14.6 percent versus 12.1 percent quarter over quarter and 12 percent year over year. The internet ticketing segment continued to demonstrate resilience amid conversion of reserved 2S tickets back to unreserved tickets as during the pre-pandemic period. The revenue for the quarter was at rupees 290 crore, which declined by just 1.7 percent quarter over quarter and 3.8 percent year over year. The EBIT margin for the quarter came at 82.7 percent versus 88.1 percent quarter over quarter and 84.5 year over year. The tourism segment, it has seen the impact of seasonality, especially in state Tirtha, with revenue for the quarter at rupees 142.5 crore, implying a decline of 30.2 percent quarter over quarter, though tourism se overall segment registered a growth of 23.8 percent on year on year basis. Given the decline in quarter on quarter revenue, the segment reported a loss at the EBIT level versus profit on quarter on quarter and year on year basis due to a one time adjustment of one exceptional item of rupees 51.9 crore towards provisioning of revised haulage charges of the previous years for the tethers train as has been the mandated by the Ministry of Railways. Railnir saw Q1 FY24 revenue of rupees 92.2 crore implying a growth of 31.4 percent quarter on quarter and 10.2 percent year on year reported EBIT margin of 13.2 percent versus 18.6 percent quarter on quarter and 11 percent year on year due to increase in the production cost especially the petroleum products. The further the decrease in EBITDA in current quarter that is Q1 also due to allocation of income because of reversal in provision of PRP done in the last quarter. Now for Q1 FY24 the capex was rupees 101 crore. The net worth and cash back balances company at the end of the quarter is rupees 2709 crore and rupees 1912 crore respectively. That brings to the end of the opening remarks. Now we can straightway move to the question answer session. Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for that opening remark. At this point, I would request all the participants to use the raise hand option which is available on the reaction tab uh, on your uh, Zoom platform. In case uh, you don't want to ask the question from a raise hand option, you can alternatively uh, give your questions on the chat window. We will read those for you. Thank you. At this point, I would request the participant to stay unmute and only the participant which I announced for question can use their line to unmute and ask the question. First question uh, is from Jinesh Joshi. You may please go ahead with your question, Jinesh. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, two questions from uh, my side. Uh, First is that uh, to what extent uh, there has been a revision in the custody charges uh, for uh, Tejas Express uh, and on what grounds are we seeking a waiver uh, from railways for earlier years? Okay, um, this uh, I would like to answer this. This is a charge which has been revised from the post dated that is from 13th August 2021 to 31st March 23. What happens this haulage indexation is notified by the ministry every year. But for these two years they have uh, uh, issued a circular in revision in haulage charges from the uh, August 21 with this uh, letter was given to us only in the year to 23. So we are not seeking any waiver. We have requested ministry to reconsider so that these revised charges should be made applicable only from the future date not from the retrospective effect. We have made a representation and we are pursuing it with the Ministry of Railways. Uh, 
Sure. Uh, but would you like to call out the number in terms of uh, how much the revision has been? I would be, um, just give me a second, I will get the details, otherwise we will mail it to you. Um, I would request my CIRO to give the details at this mail, whatever the revised haulage charges are and what was previously there. Thank you. Amount, I've, I've, amount is already informed, it is 51.9 crores for the period 13th August 21 to 31st March 23. This is the total amount which has come to us uh, as a liability. but. Uh, detailing uh, details of how this these charges are calculated will be mailed to you. Thank you, Joshi. Sure. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, if I uh, look at this announcement with respect to this uh, 78 crores of investment for procurement of uh, hardware and software, uh, is this a part of our IT modernization plan that we had communicated earlier or uh, is this capex over and above that? Um, I would like to advise you, this is a part of the CAPEX plan which we have advised. This is the upgradation of exit system and we had projected this uh, expenditure in this year as CAPEX. Uh, sure, just one last question. Uh, I think after a uh, reversal in 2S setting, uh, the monthly average uh, non-suburban traffic uh, uh, used to hover in the band of about uh, 6 crores odd per month. But uh, if I look at the July month figure, uh, which is available on the website of uh, Indian Railway, uh, the number has increased uh, to about 7 crore odd. Uh, so is there any anything specific uh, with respect to uh, uh, this jump which you would want to highlight? See, um, for this quarter, which is we are talking April to June, uh, uh, this 2S, I will just give you a little background. This 2S reservation was reversed by ministry in the month of February 22, right? And it implementation took some time data because of data booking and it was implemented till middle of the June, July 22, right? So, in this quarter, April to June, which is under consideration, my uh, 2S reversal has uh, internet ticket of 2S for 11.56 crores in last year first quarter and this quarter is 10.41 crores that is uh, internet ticket has gone down by um, uh, substantially uh, for my system but thankfully aap agar total dekhe system ticket as well as my reserved and undeserved ticket my uh, performance share of e-tickets has gone up uh, it was for the first quarter share of total ticketing e-ticketing has increased Last year it was 79.64 and this year it is 80.86. So whatever pi is available to me for reservation, this is increasing. Okay, madam. Uh, I'll, I'll take this separately. I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll speak uh, later on, on this. Thank or, you so much. for. Or you can seek whatever clarification on this through the mail. We'll provide you all the details. Sure, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next questions come from the line of uh, Moksha Shah. Uh, Moksha, you can uh, probably unmute yourself and ask your question. And I would request other participants who are willing to ask questions can raise their hand at this point. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. So my question was on catering business. Catering and rail need business, especially catering. The share has the share from the, for the overall revenue has increased. It was forty one percent, and now it is increased to forty seven. So, do you think how is this driven? Is there any specific reason, and how do you expect this to go? Like going forward, do you expect it to remain high as a percentage of total revenue? Yeah, uh, Ms. Shah, uh, this uh, I would g give you the reason why it has gone. Why it is seeing the upward trend? See. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had catering in uh, in 891 trains. I am talking about 2019 pre-COVID scenario. Now, at present, post-COVID, I am talking as on, uh, say, end of July, we have provided catering contracts in 1209 trains. So, we are providing more and more trains and around 200 more contracts are in pipeline. Uh, this is the reason and for further growth, uh, we are working on the reassessment of sale which is mandated by the ministry that would also give us the further flip in this catering earnings for IRCTC. 
So with this we expect it to go increase yes. in the next few years. Yes. Okay. Also, if you could provide me the number of daily average ticket for this quarter, like quarter one FY24, how is this in comparison to the last year, same quarter? Um, you uh, you are seeking for this detail for the deserved segment? Yes. Okay, just give, give me a moment, I will provide this detail. This is um, total tickets you are seeking, no? Um, for this year? Not the total tickets, it's higher, the daily average tickets. It's around 18 crores. This comes to around 18 crores per month for this quarter. In the first quarter, around 16 crores. Per As month? Per month, average, I'm per month, I'm telling you per month. Okay. Okay. For this quarter to be, uh, this thing for total is 54.70 crores to be precise. So, average is around 18 crores. And in the last quarter, it was, just, um, Ms. Shah, just give me a second. I would like to reconfirm the uh, figures before I give you anything wrong. No problem. So, um, I will, I stand corrected. Tickets, uh, if you see, total tickets is 3.37 crores in the month of April, 3.56 crores in the month of May, and 3.49 crores in the month of June. This is the uh, total, uh, this thing of total tickets booked by IRCTC. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I will take a question uh, from uh, the chat window. Uh, which is that uh, in tourism part Q1 show up uh, GC, gross contribution. Not clear, please, please come again. Please come again, please. I'll yeah, the, the participant uh, uh, is keen to understand uh, there is a loss in the tourism segment. If you could explain uh, more about it, why it happened and what is the uh, gross contribution or gross margin? Yeah, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, this tourism segment has taken a hit because of uh, fi around 52 crores, to be precise, 51.9 crores uh, exceptional item taken into the account. This is because of revision in haul and charges from the force dated by the Ministry of Railways. If I take out this uh, exceptional item, then my tourism sector has also made profit. Thank you. I will take another question from the chat, which comes from Madhu Chandra Day. Uh, the question is, what is the breakup of internet ticketing between convenience fee and what is the total number of tickets sold? Um, tickets sold I have already advised um, in the previous question. I can tell you about the convenience fee. This quarter, uh, this is Q1 of uh, F524, convenience fee is 198 crores and any further uh, information is required? I have told you about number of tickets as well as convenience fee. Yeah, so the other part of the question is what is the breakup of other uh, segment within the ticketing, internet ticketing segment yeah, I other can, than the convenience fee? Yeah, I can say convenience fee is 198.48 crores. Then my service charges stand at 0.13 crores. Service charges other than the I ticket is 19.48 crores. Then um, my agent uh, commission received is 17.74 crores. License fee earned from the call center is 0 0.06 crores. Uh, integrated 139 and rail mother this 2.05 crores, A agent login authentication 1.97 crores, inquiry charges are 0.8 crores and chatbot charges are 0.32. To if we total everything in the internet ticketing, this comes to 290 crores. Thank you. Uh, the next question is uh, 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 from Rohit. He has couple of questions. The first question is why the margin in the ticketing segment has gone down? sharply. Yeah, I would um, rephrase it. As we know that 2S ticketing was given to IRCTC during COVID, which was reversed by Ministry of Railways in the month of February 22, and it was impl implemented up to July. So, uh, whatever uh, you are seeing, as I read it earlier, there is a sharp decline in number of tickets and passenger of 2S segment, if we compare it to the Q1 of last year. 
but this effect it will last only till the uh, say middle of the Ju july now onwards we will be at par with uh, q2 of 2022 20. another question is on the catering segment that how many trains uh, the catering services are provided by irctc and is there any other impact because of the uh, food inflation uh, to our catering revenues um, as I stated earlier, as, as on July 31st, we are providing catering services in 1,209 trains as compared to pre-COVID 891 trains. And since this tariff is fixed by Ministry of Railways, right now we are providing uh, catering at the same charges which were notified by the Ministry of Railways in 2019. Thank you. Uh, another question from the chat is, uh, can you explain about what is the revenue breakup from owned plant versus PPP model in the rail near segment? Um, there total we have 16 plants out of which 4 are my departmentally owned and 12 are PPP model. And in the pipeline we have 4 more which would be commissioning very soon, 3 in this year and 1 P, uh, PPP plant next year it will go into FY20, uh, in 2024 now as far as revenues are concerned um, I can give the production value in terms of revenue we would share it uh, because this is a detailed item see I can give you a lump sum figure of rail near details of PPP and departmental we will be sharing it later because we don't maintain it in our accounts in the books of accounts but in the rail need in this quarter we have earned 90.54 crores from the sale of the rail need and 1.61 crores as license fee so total uh, my revenues from this rail need segment for the quarter, uh, quarter under consideration is 92.15 crores Right. The follow-up question on this is, uh, what is the total number of, uh, what is the capacity at this point and what is the utilization and any upcoming plant later in this year? Yeah, uh, as I said, the total 16 plants are operational today with a capacity of 15,52,000 litres per day. And uh, there are in pipeline f four more plants, which are three of which are expected this year. And uh, another one will go in the next financial year with the total capacity with these four plants will become 18,40,000 litres per day. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there is another question from participant who wishes to understand uh, when, what are the plan on the golden chariot, uh, do we plan to start uh, that? See, Golden Chariot is a luxury train which is owned by uh, the government of Karnataka Tourism and we, uh, we are in the partnership with them for operation of this train. Uh, this year, uh, they are already advertised some of the itineraries and we are in touch with them and we hope to do a good business on this model. Thank you. Next, we will take a uh, question from the participants who are online. Uh, we would request... Uh, Participant who wish to ask question can use the raise hand tab in the reaction tab on the uh, Zoom platform. Uh, the next question comes from the line of Dipesh Lakhani. Dipesh, you may please unmute your line and ask your question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I just wanted an update on the payment aggregator license and also IP revenues in this quarter. Yeah, give me a second. I'll just give it to you, IP, this thing. Um, on the IP platform, number of payment transactions handled during this quarter is 1.54 crores. It has increased by 12.94 percent because if we, uh, and 36 percent increase over the previous year. Okay, and uh, update on the payment aggregator license. We are in the process of getting this license from RBI. And as, as recommended by RBI, we are in the process of forming a subsidiary for this IP license. Okay, okay. So, uh, also revenues for the trading yeah. and its occupancy level? 
I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Uh, revenues for Tejas Trains and its occupancy level in this quarter. I will give it to you in a second. Okay. Um, for there are two Tejas. There is one LG and New Delhi Tejas. For this quarter, the occupancy has been 72.8 percent, and for Ahmedabad MMCT Tejas, the occupancy has been 89.2 percent. And if we see revenue. Combined together for those these two train is forty five point eight nine crores. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we take a question from Devang from IDBI Capital. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, two questions. One is that what led to the increase in catering margins uh, this quarter? Uh, what were the key drivers? And second one is. Uh, what could be the trajectory of tourism margins uh, considering that you know now revise all the charges will be applicable for tejas hello am i audible sorry i'll repeat it again see catering as i told you we are we have increased the number of trains on which we are providing the catering services we are way ahead even the pre covid scenario that has increased my catering margins Uh, as i uh, as i answered in the previous question pre covid in 2019 we only were serving 891 trains today i stand on 1209 trains and 12 200 additional trains are in pipeline this has resulted into my margins increasing in catering segment as far as tourism is concerned tejas is only one train uh, we are having around uh, iactc is having Ten trains from Indian Railways for Bharat Gaurav Scheme Tourism Train. That is my biggest market now. In addition to this, I also run State Tirtha Special. So, tourism segment we are having many products. Tejas is just uh, one part of it, and I am hundred. I am very confident that we will do better in tourism segment in the coming season. As we all know, uh, uh, tourism sector industry as an industry in India. is a seasonal thing it comes it picks up from september mid and goes up to february which is a peak of this so i am i am confident that we'll do much better in tourism segment in the coming quarters so would we be seeing uh, similar margins which we saw for fi 23 overall in tourism uh, considering the ups and downs uh, yes we can we are hopeful and we are hopeful that we'll be able to meet this Okay, thank you. Are you done with your questions? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next question uh, is from the line of Rohit Jain. Uh, Rohit, you may unmute your line and ask. Rohit, you are on mute. Can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you are audible now. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, my question was uh, on the catering side. Uh, so you mentioned the, the number of trains that you are currently providing catering services to. I just wanted to understand what is the total number of trains potentially that we can increase it to. Like, I mean, uh, in the next six months, uh, how much can that increase by? See, total Mail Express train as on date on Indian Railways are around two thousand odd uh, pairs. When I say pairs, it is one coming and going. we have around 2000 pairs of train on indian railways out of which the trains having pantry car or having run of more than 8 hours we are looking for the providing catering services that numbers comes around 1500 odd pairs so we have already reached 1209 trains now we would be working on the remaining trains and also we would be revising the license fee as mandated by ministry uh, with effect from as in the 2019 so we are looking for a good trajectory in the catering business right so as you said uh, we are already at 1200 and potential currently as it stands is about 1500 trains so we can uh, increase it by another 2 300 and then we would be pretty much uh, at our uh, let's say uh, full capacity as far as providing catering services is concerned no no we are also in the like indian railways always announcing new trains you know the how vande bharat trajectory is going on and then uh, we there are always a uh, program of indian rail ministry of railways to uh, to announce new trains announce new services increase the frequency of trains extension election specials we have lo lot of scope to do the catering business 
fair enough. And my second question, which again somebody asked but was not clear, was uh, given the uh, recent increase in uh, vegetable prices, uh, especially tomato and other uh, things, which have really increased a lot. Uh, and given the fact that our uh, uh, tariffs are uh, fixed and are at 2019 levels, uh, what sort of an impact would that have on the catering margins going forward? Right night, uh, right now, I can say that licensee is committed as per contract to provide the catering services on the tariff issued by the Ministry of Railway in 2019. That is a contract condition and he is bound to give me this. So as far as my uh, revenues are concerned, they are absolutely protected. So basically you are saying that that hit has to be taken by the licensee and basically as ICTC you don't have to suffer any of that. No, no, I am not saying that. I am not saying that. Uh, I am saying whenever we, uh, when the uh, contract was signed between IRCTC and licensee, he was aware what services at what cost have to be given. Uh, so we, we are continuing with the services with the same uh, tariff as notified by the Ministry of Railways. Understood. And, once, uh, and my second question is on the growth potential. Uh, given that uh, we are already at a pretty uh, uh, decently penetrated levels as far as e-ticketing is concerned in India, and the uh, uh, fact that uh, the uh, number of passenger growth in uh, uh, railways in India is, you know, low to mid single digit at best. So, uh, and the number of trains added uh, in the country also is uh, pretty low as, uh, you know, as in comparison to the stock of the train that is already there. So, in the core segment of ticketing, uh, uh, should we? Expect expect uh, uh, the growth rates uh, apart from any tariff revision uh, to be in the mid to low single digit is that the right understanding no no we are working we are uh, expecting a rather shift in more number of people on e ticketing because right now we stand at uh, say 80.86% eight, have booked uh, through e ticketing we, uh, so with our efficient services upgradation of our systems um, more, we are hoping that we'll, uh, more number of people will shift towards the e-ticketing. I understand that, but given the nature of the country and a lot of the population is still rural and uneducated, uh, is no. there a, a, a level at which you think uh, the e-ticketing sort of uh, 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 maxes out in the near term? Yeah, it, it does, because if you see with the IRCTC app, we are having a, a six... Um, See, with the ICTC app being so popular, I am 100 percent sure that people are, uh, and this with government's 5G penetration and uh, uh, strengthening of uh, internet facility right up to the village level, I am, we are hopeful that more number of people will shift to the e-ticketing. And also with new trains being announced, with extension of services, with uh, increase in frequency of trains, number of people uh, will increase on Indian Railways. Fair enough. And just last question from my side, uh, uh, is there any uh, uh, discussion on any revision uh, as far as the rail leave prices are concerned or, uh, you know, ticketing convenience fee and the sharing with the government? Is there any discussion on renegotiations on that front? We can only re request or make a reference to Ministry of Railways. So, rail need we have written and we would be pursuing it with the Ministry of Railways. But uh, no communication from their side as yet. So, uh, this is in the pipeline. We have only made a reference and uh, now we will be pursuing it. I cannot give uh, any kind of a commitment on behalf of ministry here. Okay, fair enough. Thanks a lot for answering my question. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. At this point, I will take a couple of questions from the chat window. Uh, there is a question uh, in terms of why the uh, revenue, the, the non-ticketing part of the revenue have declined uh, on a YOY basis. I would Hello. request uh, this question to be uh, further clarified so that I can give the relevant answer. So uh, basically uh, the question if I understood it right is about uh, if you look at the no, uh, non-convenience fee part of the internet ticketing that revenues have declined from 100 odd crore to 91 crore. What is the reason uh, for decline in the non-convenience fee part of the ticketing segment? Um, see, the uh, UPI transaction share, it has increased. It was 
3.84 crores in the Q1 of last year, now it has become 3.93 crore transaction. So, what happens with this hike of uh, transactions? My uh, UPI transaction has a reduced convenience fee. From 15 and 30, it goes down to rupees 10 and 15 for sleeper and AC correspondingly. So, number of uh, transactions are increasing of, uh, on UPI platform and my corresponding convenience fee is little going down. And, and even uh, there is a slight hit in the agent business because um, if we see FY23, it was 37 crores and uh, in this quarter is 32.39 crores. Thank you. This next question is from Naman Jain. Uh, he is asking what is the mix of uh, tickets sold in terms of 2S, SL uh, class and different classes. Thank you. Just give me a second, please. I'll give you. See, for, uh, for 2S ticket, um, for 2S ticket, April to June last year, system tickets on the counters were 2.94 crores. Internet ticket were 11.56 crores. The total tickets for 2S were 14.5 crores. And uh, for this year, April to June, on the counters is 2.46 crores, internet tickets are 10.41 crores, so total ticket for 2S is 12.8 crores. Um, so number of tickets, uh, totality for 2S have gone down, uh, this is for 2S ticket. Right, there is uh, a follow up which is like what is the breakup between AC and non-AC uh, tickets during the quarter? Um, for this quarter, if we see, this is a uh, 484 lakh tickets in the, in for the AC segment and for non-AC segment, it is 558 lakhs for this quarter. And Thank you. And lastly, what is the… U sorry. Yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, ask if you want the figures of the last year quarter also, Q1 of last year, for AC it was… 404, 404 crores, four, uh, sorry, 404 lakhs, and for non AC, it was 754 lakhs. Okay, thank you. Uh, this question is last part of the question is what is the UPI share in terms of ticketing? So, UPI, as I've uh, just mentioned in the previous question, it has, inc it has increased the overall share. See, UPI transaction. Uh, has in, for last year 3.84 crores, it has increased to 3.93 crore. So, it is a share is 35.3 uh, percent last year and this year it is 37 point percent. At this point, we will take question from the participant uh, live on the platform. Uh, uh, next question comes from the line of Rahul. Uh, Rahul, you may unmute your line and ask your question. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I would like, to, I have two questions. Uh, first is any thought process by IRCT for, for selling of uh, its consumer data as it can generate additional revenue IRCT in the digital world. And second is any future prospects of, uh, you know, including even freight ticket booking business to IRCT from Indian Railway because the freight business is also you know, rapidly expand, expanding in the, in the country. Rahulji, this data uh, which is on e-ticketing platform is of passenger of Indian railways. So, IRCTC is not uh, right now planning monetization of this data because this data is of the passengers of Indian railways. And as far as air ticketing is concerned, we, we have um, another segment where we deal with the air ticketing segment in tourism sector. Number of air ticket books in this quarter are 4.77 lakh. Um, and the last uh, it, and the last quarter, uh, last year Q1 was 4.5. So you see this growth of 5% if we see Q1 as compared to the Q1 of last year. And if I see Q4 of 22-23, two, it is a growth of 3.66%. These are the air tickets being booked by the on IRCTC platform. 
Yeah. Uh, apart from the air tickets, I would also want to know uh, what about the rail freight, which is currently dealt only by Indian Railway. Any any future prospects where I, uh, we can also uh, you know book freight uh, bookings, rail bookings uh, from uh, IRCTC. Uh, could you please clarify what kind of booking Indian Railways are doing? Uh, the, right now, the current uh, freight, that is uh, the transportation of goods. Acha, you, uh, acha, okay, the freight. Uh, you mean to say the the goods uh, traffic? Uh, exactly, exactly. That that is another application which is hosted in uh, Chris, and it is ministry is doing directly through the freight operation information system. IRCTC as of now has no in, uh, this thing mandated. Hamare jo company ka jo mandate hai, wo sirf catering, tourism, and uh, this thing for Indian railways and e-ticketing. Okay, okay, okay. Just wanted to know if we can add that uh, also business in the future, uh, which can be remunerative for IRCTC. <laughs> Only if when ministry decides. Thank you. Yeah. Are you done with your questions? Thank you. Next, I'll take a question from the chat window. Ma'am, uh, the question is, ma'am, comparatively from uh, Q2, Q1 of FI22, uh, revenue in this quarter uh, have uh, been uh, weak despite so much demand in the tourism. Uh, what is leading to for this kind of a revenue? See, <coughs> in the tourism segment, as we have discussed before, we there is a profit. Only thing is this exceptional item, which is 52 crores, which have come from the ministry. If I take out this exceptional item, which has been uh, in the tourism segment, our revenues are. Uh, uh, up uh, uh, by uh, there's a profit in tourism segment as well. Thank you. Uh, the good. next question uh, is regarding regarding what are the prospect of uh, one day Bharat train uh, once uh, all this thick program goes in. What is the increase in the internet ticketing potential of the business? See, Vande Bharat is also one kind of train which is available in the reserved segment for ticketing. So, there is, uh, this inventory gets added to already available inventory for the ticketing. So, and Vande Bharat um, is already continuously being added and there is a very ambitious plan of the government of India for having more number of Vande Bharat in the coming future. So, this will add to my uh, prospects of e-ticketing doing better and this would also give us the additional opportunity for catering services when the new trains are added as well as rail near so uh, my e-ticketing catering rail near entire uh, segment will see a boost as in as in when uh, these Vande Bharats are being added by the Ministry of Railways thank you uh, the next question uh, is related to uh, related to this uh, data protection bill has been passed. It has will become law sooner. Now IRCTC plan for data monetization. Uh, what will be the impact for that? If you could give any brief on that. See, as I told you, this data is belongs to the passenger of Indian Railways and IRCTC is fully committed to follow whatever the act is passed by the government of India. Okay. Next question is, uh, are we looking to bid, this is from Utkash Maheshwari, uh, are we looking to bid for Vande Bharat like that of Tejas uh, tourism business? No, Tejas was one of its own, um, one segment which was given to IRCTC by Minister of Railways. Vande Bharat is like other mail express super fast trains and premium segment so this will uh, we would be doing the ticketing catering and rail need services only in these vande bharat train as things stands today thank you uh, the next question uh, is uh, on the lean period related uh, is the reconciliation on the catering business regarding the lean period and normal period has been done with or is there any more scope left in terms of any license fee revision in any contract? So this is going on and we would be finishing, um, we are doing it on priority and uh, maybe it will take a month more then we will raise the demand and realize it. This process is on. Thank you. The next question from chat window is from MS Vinod. 
The question is, uh, ma'am, what about the RSD train? Any revenue and profit breakup you can share about it? Um, say for one particular segment, I would be taking out the details and my CIRO will be sh sharing it with the uh, with the uh, the person asking the question uh, on mail. But right now, whatever details I broadly I can share with you. Um, see, I can tell you the turnover, right? Turnover this quarter is to 46 crores for RSG trains. And as compared to Q1 of last year, this was 201 crores. This is the turnover of RST trains. Other details we can give you um, on the mail. Thank you. At this point, I would request participants who may have any question can use the reaction tab to do a raise hand and ask your question. The next question comes from the line of Dipesh. Dipesh, you may unmute your line and ask your question. Yeah, uh, so as you man mentioned earlier in this call that uh, four new plants are in the pipeline. So does it include uh, Vijayawada and Bhubaneswar plants which you mentioned in the previous call? Like the yes, these the uh, yeah, these four upcoming plants are Bhubaneswar, Kota, NTPC, Simadri and Vijayawada. Okay, okay. So like when it is going to be operational like see we are uh, looking for uh, these bhubneshwar kota and ntpc simadri to be commissioned in this uh, calendar year by the and towards the end of this calendar year and vijayawada will go into the uh, q1 of the next year next financial year okay okay so all these are ppp model yes all these are ppp model okay okay thank you Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, from the chat window is uh, related to what are the prospects we see in the tourism segment uh, and overall what are the potential from various segments uh, since uh, all this pricing related normalization has happened, what are the next few growth triggers? Thank you. See, um, as I advised and in, informed in the previous uh, question, the ICTC has uh, has taken 10 rakes from uh, Indian Railways for running tourist circuit trains under the policy of Bharat Gaurav tourist train. So we are in the planning uh, uh, with these 10 rakes uh, under the um, right to use charges which have been taken from the Ministry of Railways. We are looking for a, a healthy growth in the tourism sector. And what could be the growth trigger in other segment other than tourism segment? See, um, we have already uh, s this thing uh, as uh, as per the announcement of Ministry of Railways, around uh, in uh, around 475 Bande Bharat trains are going to be added in next three years. So, if these 475 Bande Bharat trains are added in the fleet of Indian Railways, IRCTC is a natural uh, this thing to sir, to provide catering services, e-ticketing, rail need. So these are the impetus we are looking for uh, our um, business of IRCTC. Thank you. Uh, Madam, what is our uh, wage cycle and uh, when it will be effective? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Can, uh, can it be repeated? What, what is the cycle for wage revision for our business and when it will be effective? Um, for IRCTC, wage revision is done every 10 years and the last revision was done in 2000, 2017, so next revision is due only in 2027. Thank you. Next question is uh, from the chat, uh, from the uh, platform. Uh, the question is from uh, the line of Ratan. Uh, Ratan, please you may unmute your line and ask your question. Sure. Thanks for the opportunity, ma'am. Um, I have a question that our e-ticketing revenues have been flat over the last 15 months. So my question is there has been high inflation over the last couple of years. When are we likely to raise convenience fee? See, raising convenience fee is not within the purview of IRCTC's business because that is decided by Ministry of Railways. But as far as right now, we are not considering any revision in the, I stand corrected, 
my team is uh, telling me. Now, as of now, IICTC is not looking for revision of the convenience fee. But as far as e-ticketing business is concerned, we are seeing a plateau because a lot of infra work is going on in Indian Railways. As we are aware, Indian Railways are adding new tracks and so much of infra, 24,000 crores have been given for new infra work on Indian Railways. So since these are being done on priority, you have a lot of uh, NIs going on. So this uh, temporary um, and DFCCIL works are under, um, uh, under completion. So track linkage is going on. So little bit of, um, I must say, um, uh, this diversions or little bit of discontinuity in what you're seeing in plateauing with DFC coming up and number of freight trains going on the DFC. Uh, we will have uh, uh, line capacity to run the passenger trains and which will ultimately result into more uh, passenger traveling on Indian railways and leading to sh increased share of e-ticketing. Yeah, ma'am, but the the convenience fee is pretty low, 10 rupees, 15 rupees. I think it doesn't, uh, because uh, if you look at our other revenues, which are uh, which have lower margins, it is important to balance it out uh, by raising prices. See, presently we are having a profit of around 80% profit in, in e-ticketing. So th there is no b basis for increasing further this convenience fee and putting on to the Indian Railways passenger burden. All right. And can you map out the what is the e-ticketing revenue uh, that can happen for per Vande Bharat train? We need to work out the projection per Vande Bharat, how it comes to, because train-wise e-ticketing profiling needs to be done, and we would be sharing it soon with you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Uh, this was the last question for the session today. I would now request uh, IRCTC uh, management to give their final remark. <coughs> Thanks for this uh, opportunity to us also because we keep on want to learn the, that what is the I mean uh, expectation from your side and as investors and on the behalf of investors whatever you say so we try that within the policy guidelines uh, to follow it and take the community to greater heights and if there is any other question any more details any more specific just your data so of everything we have we are totally transparent so if you to please send on email zero also then we will say, say ensure that everything is sent to you thank you very much